Welcome back to another tutorial guys and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a basic medieval style kind of shirt in Blunder. So this one doesn't have a lot of fancy little bits and rims, it's just as basic as a shirt can get. And I'm going to show you how to make the main body part first and then I'm going to show you how to go into edit mode and add the sleeves as an additional thing. And the reason I'm doing that is just to kind of teach you a workflow to show you how you can add the different parts to the shirt even once you've made and model the main shirt. You can always come in into edit mode, add different parts and just rerun the simulation. So this is a bit of a different workflow than some of the other cloth ones I've done. So if you think this is something you'd like to learn, keep watching and as always I will be putting these little project files on my Patreon which is also in the description below. So uh, let's get started. I hope you guys like it. As I've mentioned in the beginning, if you are going to be using this on a human kind of character, make sure that it's in a stationary T-pose to begin with, if you're animating it, or if it's just stationary. So you just want it to be in this kind of T-pose, arms slightly bending down to the ground. Um, you can see here this character is nice and central in the world here. And I've got my 3D cursor here right in the middle of the character, so when I do add in my plane, I know it's going to be nice and symmetrical with the subject here. So to get started, I'm going to go shift A, I'm going to add in a simple plane. You see it's in here. And if your character is kind of like this small compared to the plane, just scale it up. Try and get it more to kind of more realistic, um, a realistic scale. So I'm just going to, something like that should be what you're kind of looking for. So you're going to take the plane and you're going to go G, Z, and you're going to move it up to about the middle of the body up here in the upper half. And if you go to your right view, it should also kind of be in the middle like that. You don't want your subject too much forward or too back. So just something like that, nice and even. You're going to select the plane, tab into edit mode, and with all of this geometry active, you're going to go R, X, 9, 0, and hit enter. So now it's up straight. We're going to go G, Y, and move it forward in our scene. So now when we go into our front orthographic view, this is what we should see. So with this plane active, we're going to go into our modifiers. I'm going to give it a mirror modifier. We're going to go G to move it over to the side. Enable clipping and then bring that back and it should clip together. So we're going to bring it about here. And you can see that these verts down here should be roughly here, just underneath the crotch. And then these ones here should be just underneath the shoulder here, the, the bottom of the armpit. We're then going to go E to extrude it up to about here and we're going to go R to rotate it and then G to move it down just like that and once you have that done you're going to hover over one of these edges and you go control R you're going to see a yellow line appearing that's a, like an edge that's being added in I'm just going to double click and add that in and now you can see we have this I'm going to go to my edge select option and just select this edge over the shoulder by itself and I'm going to just rotate it slightly and I'm going to go E to extrude it up to here and um, you should have something that just looks like that now what we're going to do is we're going to select this edge down here and we're going to go E to extrude that one out to about here. Okay, so, it's, so far you can see how it's all coming together. Now one of the issues here is that it's going out too far from the center part of the body here. Um, but at the same time we could enable proportional editing and bring it in like this. But then it's going to be too narrow. Um, the, this edge here is going to be too close to this edge here and we want to subdivide this and have, ni and have nice even edges um, faces. So what we're going to do is we're going to just select this edge through proportional editing enabled. We're going to go G, roll the middle mouse button and we're going to move it in but we want to make sure that we keep the spacing of those edges kind of even. So we're going to go to something about that much and if any of these edges are kind of uneven just select them and just move them like this. We want nice even spacing between these edges here. So you can kind of see where I'm getting at here. We're then going to go to a vertex select option and we're going to select this vert here. We're going to go G to move it down a bit. Select this vert here and bring it kind of more closer to the arm. Grab this vert here, bring it down and then bring this guy out a bit. So just something that looks like that. Okay, not too hard to do. Then we're going to hover over one of these edges here. We're going to go Control R, and we're going to roll our middle mouse button just so we add in about three cuts or so, three edges, and these should all almost look roughly like even squares, right? We don't want something that looks kind of like this. You know, you can see we have this face here, 
but then compared to the face above it or next to it, it's just way too long. So make sure these are, um, faces are all kind of roughly the same volume. Um, just roughly, should be fine. Over here you can see these are a bit too long, so we're gonna hover over this edge, Control R, and just click that in. So now these faces look a little bit more even. So that so far, it's going pretty well. This is what we have, it looks about right. So we're gonna hit A to select everything, we're gonna right click, and we're gonna go subdivide. We're gonna go down to our subdivision tab, and under the number of cuts, we're gonna bump it up to two. And now we have more geometry to simulate here. So what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna hit, with all of this active, we're gonna go E to extrude, we're gonna extrude it back. And we need to extrude it back or move it back till it's not intersecting with any of the back geometry. So just bring it out about this much. And once we've done that, come in here and with our face select option enabled, we can select these faces in the inside here. So I'm gonna select this face here, holding in shift and control, I'm gonna click on this face here and it should select everything in between. And we're then gonna to come to the next opening, which is under the arm here. And we're gonna select all of these faces. So I'm holding in shift, clicking in this face, and then shift and control, I'm clicking on this face here, and it's filling in everything in between. Then the next opening is gonna be at the bottom. So I'm gonna do the exact same selection technique to select all of these faces. And once I have all of the opening areas selected, I'm gonna hit X and delete faces. I'm then going to come up here and select these three faces. And I'm also gonna select these faces here. And what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna hit X, but we're not gonna delete the faces. We're gonna go only faces. So the difference there is it does delete the faces, but it leaves in our edges for us. And that's gonna tell which these vertices here, which ones they need to connect with on the opposite side when it all kind of sews together in our simulation. So what we can do now is tab out. And don't worry about like if we run the simulation and anything's not quite right. At any time, because it's non-destructive, you could come in here and edit things. So with this selected, I'm gonna to go to object mode and enable shade smooth. And also just quickly tab into edit mode, hit A to select everything, and just go Alt N and just go recalculate outside. Because at the moment, the back extrusion here has the faces or normals pointing inside um, the same direction as the one we duplicated from, which can give us some issues with our simulation and when we add a solidify modifier. So just doing that to kind of corrects the normals so they're all facing towards the outside of the geometry. So go back into object mode. And now we can make sure that if we select our character here, we go to our physics, make sure it has a collision. So collision modifier is important. And under your modifiers, if you do have an armature, or a mirror, make sure the collision is at the bottom of the stack. That's super important. We can now select our shirt, which it is at this point, and we can go to our physics, and we can click on the good old cloth simulation here. And what we need to do is, you know, if we did hit the space bar now, you can see, you know, nothing interesting. So what we need to do is go to frame one, and we need to come down, and we need to come over to under our physics and the cloth, we need to come down to the shape here. And there's gonna be this nice little option called sewing, which we're gonna enable. And now if we hit the space bar from frame one, look at that. We have this awesome, cool looking uh, simulation. And what we can do as well, if you wanna make it look even better, is you can come over here to the self collision under the collisions and enable that as well. Go to frame one, then hit the space bar, and it looks even better. Pretty cool. And remember what I was saying earlier, if you don't like anything, you can just tab into edit mode and you can just adjust things because you know you have the ability to do it. Um, so let's come in here and enable proportional editing and in our front orthographic view, we can hit C and in wireframe mode, I'm just gonna select these guys under the armpit here and I'm just gonna go G and just kind of move them up and in towards the armpit a bit more. Maybe select these guys here, and I'm just showing you guys just how cool this is. I mean, really, at any time, I can just come in here and select these verts. I can enable my proportional editing, I can move them around, edit them, you know. I got so much freedom with this, and it's just really, really cool. It's very um, forgiving kind of workflow, so I'm just gonna maybe move these guys down a bit. And the nice thing is we kind of already have the rough shape established. We can just simply come in here and just customize it, make it kind of fit our character the way we want it to. You know, 
And when we go into object mode again, just go to frame one, hit the spacebar and re-simulate. And that's pretty much it. That's a really simple way of making a shirt. Let's just quickly add a few more uh, things to this. Let's go over to our physics uh, modifiers, sorry. And let's add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth things out. And let's add a, on top of that, a solidifier. And now let's come to our thickness and just drag that out a bit. And now we have some thickness to that and the cloth looks even better. So with your cloth here, you can go to your physics at any time and you can mess around with some of these physical properties, like for example, the tension, the bending, the spring. And at the moment, this does look a little bit levery. So you could try, you know, bringing down the bending amount and the tension and the tension amount a bit. So I might just take tension down to something like seven, go to frame one, hit the space bar, and that looks a little bit better. Um, but yeah, let's also just quickly, I'm just gonna quickly just give this a viewport color here. So I'm giving it a material, just giving it a nice viewport color. I just like the way that looks, pretty cool. And there we have it. I could quickly show you guys if you wanted to, how you can add um, an extra part to this. If we just tab into edit mode and we go over here to our modifiers, I'm just gonna quickly disable the solidifier just so I can see what I'm doing. If you wanted to add kind of the part that goes out, you know, like the, the arm piece, you can come in here and just select these edges in here and in inside of the arm right here. And you can go E to extrude them out, S to scale them a bit, and then E to extrude them out down to here, S, X, and just flatten them a little bit, R to rotate. And then you can come in here, hover over one of these edges, Control R and roll your middle mouse button to add in some geometry. Then you can actually just select this whole new piece we've created, like that. And just so we can see it's its own piece, I'm just gonna go to my materials, click on a plus, go new and assign. And I'm just gonna make this kind of like just a bit of a different color, like that, All right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go, actually, I'm just gonna shrink the selection just by one row and I'm gonna go shift D, Y, I'm gonna move it back to where the arms are back here, um, the back of the arm. And I'm gonna go to my edge select, Shift Alt, click on this edge to loop select it, and in this inner edge here, just to select all of these edges. Then if you go Control E, you can go Bridge Edge Loops. And we've bridged them. You're gonna get this funny normal thing going on here. So just hit A to select everything, Alt N, and go Recalculate Outside. And that should fix that normal issue. And all you have to do now is just select these edges here, these edges here, and go Control E and just bridge the edge loops. Once those faces are active, hit X and go only faces. And now we have that all set up. And that's just a really quick way to add in different parts. So I'm gonna select these bottom faces, like that, edges. And then I'm gonna come in here, select these edges here. Control E, I'm gonna go bridge edge loops and go X, only faces, and now those are all connected. All we have to do now is go to our face select, shift alt, click on one of these edges here and it'll select all of these faces in here and in these ones in here as well. Hit X and only faces. So now we have all of those edges connecting the verts. Tap out into object mode, go to frame one, hit the space bar and then check out that simulation. So yeah, that is kind of how you can make a cool shirt. And this is kind of more like a medieval style kind of shirt, very basic. So I'm gonna to go to my modifiers, just enable the solidify. And uh, yeah, that's what we have. Um, I'll quickly show you one I did earlier which is this one here, which is kind of this medieval style shirt. And uh, yeah, it just looks really cool. It's really fun to play with. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if you make something really cool with it. I'll see you guys next time and uh, stay safe.